Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for August 12th to 18th. This week I read two books, I watched one movie, and I listened to one book. First this week I finished Artemis by Andy Weir. This is a book about a woman named Jazz who grew up on the moon and is contracted by a powerful businessman to do a little bit of corporate sabotage. Let's start with what I liked about this book. The premise sounded cool, although everyone who talked about it said that she was doing a heist. Which is not her goal, although heist itself is such a cool word that I can understand people wanting me to think this was about a robbery. I also enjoy the scientific details of this book because Andy Weir has proved that he is good at thinking up things like the relative weight of things and people in different atmospheres, and how many potatoes it will take to feed a man for a year on Mars. All of those aspects were interesting. But what I hated, everything to do with how the main character was portrayed. Jazz is surrounded by dudes who basically spend the whole book insinuating that she has a lot of sex and looking down on her for it. One of said dudes wants her to give his new invention, a reusable condom, a try so he can know how it feels on her end. And literally every time he sees her, he asks if she's had a chance to use it. Spoiler alert, there is no sex in this book. Additionally, Jazz didn't seem to give a crap that all people do is give her crap. It was exhausting. The misogyny was never challenged. The plotline with her former best friend and why they don't get along anymore was an interesting twist, but also felt like it was lacking something. I had held off on reading this one because I had heard early on that it was kind of disappointing after the imagination of the Martian. And where it really falls down is Weir's attempt to write a female protagonist. To his credit, at least this book had more than two female characters, which is feedback from his first book he clearly took. It just needed to be workshopped a little more. The other book I read this week was Odd and the Frost Giants by Neil Gaiman. The edition I borrowed from the library was fantastic because it was full of illustrations and silver foiling done by Chris Riddle. This book is about Odd, an unlucky boy with a Viking father and a Scottish mother, who feels like a burden to his stepfather so he goes to live in the woods for the winter. At some point in his past, one of his legs got crushed during an accident so he uses a crutch to get around. While in the woods, a fox gets his attention and brings him on a journey that eventually results in him attempting to defeat frost giants. I had a mixture of feelings about this. It was beautifully put together. I didn't know anything about this story going in, so I was excited when the animals ended up being the characters that I thought they were. I want to see reviews from people with mobile disabilities before I decide on how I feel about that aspect. I know this is a kid's book, but the smoothing over of how his Scottish mother ended up with the Vikings? It made me uncomfortable. It was played off as though she was happy to leave her home and wed to some rando before she even had a chance to learn his language. You know, as opposed to what the Vikings are known for doing when it comes to acquiring women. I read this from my local book club where we have a tradition of reading a Neil Gaiman book every August because we started in August and our first book was Neverwhere. The movie I watched this week was a documentary called The Eagle Huntress. This is about a family in Mongolia who has a tradition of hunting with eagles. By tradition, the hunters take the eaglets from the nest and train them, and after seven years, release them. Fathers teach their sons the ways of eagle hunting, and it is passed down through the generations. There are even annual festivals where hunters and their eagles compete in various challenges. As you may have guessed from the title, this documentary is about the first eagle huntress. Because of course the men in this tradition think women can't do it. There are quite a few interviews with elders that just make you roll your eyes. Oh, women can't do that, they get cold too easily. Benevolent paternalism much? To be fair, I fell asleep a few times during this documentary, not because I was uninterested, but because I got up at 3 o'clock that morning to travel. What I definitely know is it was beautifully shot, and I enjoyed it. Daisy Ridley is the executive producer, as well as the narrator. This week I listened to Spoonbenders by Daryl Gregory. This is about a family of people who all have some form of psychic ability, and the fallout of them being disproved a couple decades previous. This book starts out in a place that nearly made me give it a hard pass. This book changes perspectives, but starts out with a boy named Maddie who is giving himself a pep talk where he was definitely not going to masturbate while thinking about his cousin. Because it's creepy. And yeah, it is. But from this scene we get an instance of a boy finding out he has powers through a frequent act during puberty, which was actually refreshing, given how many narratives have girls finding out that they have powers when they become a woman or have their first period. Since there isn't a defining puberty moment on the other end of the sex spectrum, boners are an interesting choice. That is not a sentence fragment I ever thought I would say. Anyway, this is a family saga that jumps around in time, has a heist element, unlike Artemis, and has a number of loose thread plot lines that culminate during the climax. Insert boner joke here. Although I was originally wary, I ended up enjoying this audiobook. The narrator did an excellent job of giving different vocal tones to various characters. Before I end this, I wanted to give myself an excuse to show some footage I took this week. 
I said in my BookNet Fest tag video on Tuesday that I was reading Spinning Silver, and although I gave it a valiant effort, I was 40 pages shy of finishing it at midnight on Sunday when my plane landed back in Victoria. Although I spent a good portion of this trip reading in some lovely locations, I didn't want to ignore all the people I was there to see, especially because they were nice enough to honor my request of letting me see the closest library, and we also wandered into a number of local bookstores. We even found one that hosts a micro-cinema in the basement, which was super cool. Our first flight home on Saturday was cancelled because there are over 500 forest fires in my province right now, and the smoke was making it so there was no visibility. So we ended up driving four hours hours to another airport in order to get home. This meant my plan to finish the book during a peaceful layover was drastically altered to a drive where I was often interrupted by looking at all the freaking smoke and crispy trees. So yeah, Spinning Silver will be in the next weekly wrap-up. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!